Hey, I'm Zach. On this episode, we're going to address all the problems that people think are going to happen when our autonomous driving future arrives, next on Now You Know. Uh, yes, you in the front. Yeah, so if we have autonomous cars, the government or giant corporations are going to know where we are and where we're going all the time. I don't want the government to know where I am all the time. Privacy is an important concern. Unfortunately, the cat is out of the bag with that one already. Do you carry a cell phone with you? Yeah, of course. Well, then you can already be tracked if someone wants to know where you are badly enough. Next problem. So you want to trust autonomous computer cars to decide who to kill in an imminent accident? Ah, the moral dilemma question. The age-old question of what to do if my brakes stop working. Do I drive into a couple crossing the road, or a mother with a baby carriage? Yeah, how's the computer going to decide? Well, first of all, you have to understand that autonomous cars are going to get into far less accidents than humans. There were over 1.3 million people killed worldwide in road accidents last year alone. Autonomous cars will be safer by many orders of magnitude. They don't drink, they don't get sleepy, they don't text, etc. But if an accident is imminent, we, people, will program the cars to make the best moral choice. For instance, we can program the car to hurt the least number of people based on the data that it has and the cars will learn from past accidents which course of action should lead to the least harm. Will it be perfect? No. Nothing in life is perfect, but it will be many orders of magnitude safer than what we live with today. I own a car dealership, and in your previous episode, you said there will be 90% less cars on the roads, and that people may not even own cars anymore. So what's going to happen to me and my employees in this autonomous driving future? We're all going to lose our jobs. Yeah, I work in a car assembly plant making Chevy trucks. Yeah, I'm a truck driver. Am I going to lose my job? Yes, you probably will. But that is true throughout human history whenever a new technology is invented and gets adopted and disrupts the old technology. In the 1700s, for instance, rope makers used to make all the rope by beating it with wooden clubs all day. Then along came the Industrial Revolution and machines made rope. The rope makers lost their jobs and they were forced to adapt to survive. Did you really expect that you could do the same job for your entire life? Those days are pretty much over no matter what field you're in. You either adapt or you get replaced. But if people are going to lose their jobs because of autonomous cars, then we just won't stand for it. Yeah, screw autonomous cars. I won't buy one. That's an important point. The adoption of technology does not depend on whether people will lose their jobs because of it. If that were true, then the automobile would never have caught on. The Ford Model T was first introduced in 1908. By 1912, the number of cars and horses on roads were equal, and by 1917, there were no more horses on roads. Less than 10 years. And didn't all those people in the horse economy lose their jobs? Yes, they did. But we still adopted the automobile because it was much better, cheaper, faster. And what happened to those people that had worked in the horse economy? They either adapted and found new jobs, or they kept trying to produce horseshoes and went out of business. And you won't need to buy an autonomous car because in our autonomous driving future, people won't own cars. But I want to own my own car. I don't want to use a network car. Well, in the future, you could buy your own car, but keep in mind that each time you arrive at your destination, you're going to have to pay quite a premium for a parking space. The good news is that your car will go find the space and park by itself, but you'll have to pay for that privilege and you'll have to pay for the insurance, taxes, and maintenance in addition to the cost of the car, while everyone else who uses autonomous driving networks will be saving a lot of money by sharing the cost. I love to drive. I don't want a computer driving me around. You won't be able to drive on most roads, but the good news is that there will be areas where you can drive, kind of like amusement parks for driving. Fun roads with no traffic, where you can drive fast without the fear of crashing because the car you're in will be constantly watching out for you protecting you from getting into accidents while you drive to your heart's content. Because let's face it, when we see cars and car commercials, they're almost always on closed courses, and that's what we dream of doing, not sitting in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. I will never trust a car to drive me. No way. I know. It seems like we could never give up that trust to a computer. 
But that's only because up to this point in history, computers haven't had the ability to think fast enough to do all the things that humans do when we drive. And we didn't grow up experiencing this new reality, but now we can. We're just not used to it, but we will adapt. You just might not be an early adopter, but I promise that when you see enough people do it, you will try it one day, and then it will become routine even for you. When automobiles first came out, many people said the same thing. They would never trust a machine over a horse. But now, 100 years later, there aren't many people on the planet that don't drive in cars. But I like to leave stuff in my car. How do you do that with autonomous cars? What kind of stuff do you like to leave in your car? Well, how about if I'm going bowling after work? I like to leave my bowling ball and my bowling shoes in the car so I don't have to carry them back and forth from work. With autonomous self-driving cars, you could have your bowling ball and shoes transported to the bowling alley and brought in by autonomous robots to be waiting for you when you get there. What did he just say? Autonomous robots? Yeah, why not? If we can make an autonomous vehicle, we'll be able to make autonomous robots. So better yet, a robot at work could carry your bowling ball and shoes into work for you. But I like to leave my makeup in my car. Now I won't be able to do that. Hmm. I can think of a possible solution. Maybe the car that drops you off at work can coordinate with the car that will be driving you home later and can transfer belongings between cars. Or maybe storage locker stations, like what you find at train stations, will become popular and autonomous robots can temporarily store belongings in them. Or maybe autonomous drones will transfer items for us. What if the autonomous car you're driving in breaks down? Or, like, gets a flat tire? Well, this will be a lot better than it is now. Today, if this happens to you, you call AAA or a tow truck and have to go with your car to a service center and wait for your car to get fixed, which could take a long time. In the future, another autonomous car will get you almost immediately because it will be dispatched by a supercomputer that can send the car that is able to get to you the fastest. And the car that needs repairing can be picked up separately by an autonomous tow truck. And, oh yeah, because these will be electric autonomous cars, they will break down very infrequently compared to internal combustion cars because there are far fewer moving parts. And the cars will be able to predict when they need maintenance. What if I need to pick up lumber at the lumber yard? I can't fit 2x4s in a car. There will be autonomous box trucks, vans, flatbed trucks, even 18-wheel semi-tractor trailers, all different types of vehicles for different purposes. And the cool part is, you won't even need to go to the store to get those 2x4s if you don't want to. You can have them brought to you autonomously. What about security? I mean, if someone hacks into your autonomous car, they can drive you off the road or drive you into some remote location, and then people could be waiting there to rob you. Security is important, but it's important to understand that your car can be hacked right now. Most cars today, in fact, are drive-by-wire meaning that the brake pedal and or the accelerator pedal send digital signals. They no longer connect with physical cables. So, a hacker could remotely unlock your car or tamper with the car's controls and crash your car. So security will always be an issue. We'll need to make sure that these computers are secure, just like we need to make sure that your bank's computers are safe or the airliner up there can't be hacked. You're supposed to be so scientific, and yet you don't seem to have any hard facts to back up your arguments. So, why should we believe you? You're right. Throughout history, when a major technological change was about to occur that would change the direction of humankind as we know it, there was no proof that it was coming. Usually, only a few people understood what was about to happen, and even they usually got the big picture wrong. We humans have been very bad at predicting change. We usually either overestimate the time it will take, Heck, the Founding Fathers of the United States, very smart people, thought it would take a thousand years for this country to be settled from coast to coast. They were off by a factor of ten. Or we underestimate the effect it will have on society. Gunpowder, the light bulb, the atomic bomb, horseless carriages, the list is endless. When we are taught history, most often we are taught facts. Who invented what, when. We rarely go deep into how new technology changed society how quickly it was adopted, who fought it and why, what were the unintended consequences. We throw around terms like out-of-the-box thinking, but most people are still thinking inside the box even when they think they are outside the box. Describing ideas too far outside the box begins to sound crazy. Like, how could that happen? And yet throughout human history, they did happen. And that's why visionaries are so important to humankind to move us forward. Without them, you get long, dry periods in history where humans don't move forward technologically. In fact, 
they moved backwards. The Dark Ages are such a period where new ideas were stifled. I think it's important at this point to reflect for a moment on what humans have done throughout our history on this planet. We have continually developed new technologies, new tools, new ways to do things. Not that every new invention is a good one, but when an invention comes along that does a job better and it gets general acceptance by people, then you can either learn how to use the new tool or risk getting left behind. There are countless examples of people in history who chose not to adapt and they perished. We are generally quick to embrace new medicines and new weapons, maybe too quick, before we really take the time to investigate these improvements. But there are many people leery of new objects that they did not grow up with. Personal computers. Are any of you old enough to remember when personal computers started popping up in the 1980s? I was a kid when they started showing up, but I remember that my grandparents never got one. Even after a couple more decades, my grandparents never got one, never used one. Why? Because they didn't grow up with them. They didn't see the need to learn to use them. A similar thing happened with cell phones. Do you remember? Many business people started using cell phones. Many were provided them from their companies because it made communication between employees even more efficient. But it took years before the average Joe got a cell phone. And then smartphones came along and the same thing happened. It took years before your grandmother or grandfather finally got a smartphone, right? Some still don't have one. We all used to go to the video store and rent movies on VHS tapes, right? And then one day Blockbuster disappeared and we were all watching Netflix. But most people never saw it coming. In fact, here is a quote from the CEO of Blockbuster, Jim Keyes, in December of 2008. Quote, Neither Redbox nor Netflix are even on the radar screen in terms of competition. In 2010, Blockbuster went bankrupt. Mark my words, the same exact thing will happen with electric cars and with autonomous cars. At first, nobody even knows what an electric car is, and then the next thing you know, electric autonomous self-driving cars are everywhere. And before you know it, your Ford Focus is sitting in the Smithsonian Museum in the transportation exhibit next to the other antiquities. Maybe the real problem is that so many people see change as a problem instead of the opportunity for a better future that it is. Ending slavery was a change. Equal rights was a change. The transition to sustainable energy is a change. Transporting humanity off of the earth will be a change. I guess it's just a question of what side of history you'd like to be on. Now you know.